here is a little hole that presented itself to me recently. I am going to be demonstrating my preferred way of mending a hole in a sock and it's the method of knitting a patch over the hole which is my favourite because it's just pretty no frills and you can just crack on with it. Welcome to the Crimson Stitchery, a video channel about making all things beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka, you can find me elsewhere online as a sour telling, that's my username on Instagram and Ravelry, and relevant links for this video can be found in the description box down below on YouTube, so do check that out. I've been wearing my own hand knitted socks for the last few years and I've really really enjoyed it because I find that wool socks are bright, they're cheerful, they're warm because as I explored in great depth in my video Why Bother To Knit Socks, hand knitted socks are bright, warm, cheery. I honestly do find that they last a lot longer than the cotton blend socks that I used to buy from the high street, you know, in multi-packs and I just really love wearing them. However, even the best hand knitted wool socks that you've made from you know really tight gauge from high quality yarn yarn that does contain nylon even they don't last forever because nothing lasts forever apart from plastic and the environment apparently they do require mending and here is a little hole that presented itself to me recently actually in a pair of socks that I made for my sister and I already mended for her um, a little while ago which I explored in a video that I did with my sister so do check that out That's so because more holes arrived and she's obviously loving wearing them, I am going to be demonstrating my preferred way of mending a hole in a sock or indeed a hole in a piece of knitting in general. It's pretty straightforward. It does require you to have knitting and purling knowledge. So if you are someone that is enjoying exploring mending, this does require you to know how to knit because it's not just the kind of darning, sewing, patching skills, but you only need to have quite rudimentary knowledge. And it's the method of knitting a patch over the hole, which is my favorite because it's just pretty no frills and you can just crack on with it. It doesn't really need any fancy equipment beyond what you should already have in your knitting bag. And yeah, you can just kind of do it really. Um, it is what I recommend for kind of medium sized holes. So not little pinpricks. If it was a little pinprick, I probably would explore darning. Um, and if it was a really large hole, I would explore some other kind of method of patching or re-knitting. But this is for a sort of medium sized hole. This is just over a centimetre or just under half an inch in diameter so definitely large enough to warrant attention so that is the size and type of hole that I would recommend this method for so it's nothing fancy it's it's nothing that spectacular to be honest with you um, although it does definitely have the potential to have that kind of visible mending charm if you use a really fun contrast color if you do embroidery and things like that it can always be kind of pimped up off sock I'm not actually going to bother to do any of that and I'm just going to crack on with it so without further ado here we go, here we go. So without further ado, here is my tutorial. Let's start by gathering our equipment. So I've got the sock with the hole in it. I've got some yarn that I'm gonna be using for this repair. This is just a little scrap of sock yarn. So it's 75% um, wool and 25% nylon. I do recommend having a synthetic thread in your wool that you're going to be using to repair. You can see that this is a different colour, but this is sock yarn. But if you don't have the same um, yarn, you need to try and make sure that it's got the same fibre content and it's got the same weight so that the repair patch mimics the original fabric as much as possible. So obviously this is a different colour, but you're not really going to notice it because it's on the underside of the foot. If it's a sock that you need to repair, you could also use a reinforcing thread. So this is a spool of re sock reinforcing thread that actually came with a sock yarn. It was just how it was sold. They came together in a pair. So you can see that if you compare this thread with the sock yarn, it's about half as thin and it's, um, yeah, it's got the synthetic content. So you could al always hold a reinforcing thread alongside um, another yarn, but I'm not going to use this as I don't need to. And you will need knitting needles. Here I've got a pair of 2.5 millimeter needles. These are double pointed needles, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, always a helpful thing to have. And of course, my trusty pair of snips. Let's get started. 
Now there are several ways which I could try and approach this repair but I'm going to go for the most easy one. It's not necessarily the most beautiful or the most elegant but in my mind it is definitely the most straightforward. So you will need to know how to knit, you'll need to know how to knit back and forth for doing this kind of repair but it's really really nothing fancy and because it's so straightforward it just means that I actually do end up repairing my socks whereas if I'm going to you know set myself the challenge of doing an elaborate repair where I mimic the you know the, the broken stitches perfectly then if I'm honest with you chances are that I actually just won't get around to it so that's kind of my attitude. This being a sock sole again you're not going to really see it but if this hole was in a really really visible place then yes I might. I might try and do something more fancy but not in this case. So, so the first thing to do is to examine the hole and just try and find out how badly worn the hole is. So is the damage only in the actual hole? or is there any other damage to the fabric around it. So in this case the um, the hole has kind of opened up quite a bit but sometimes you can see that there's a lot of wear you know and it gets very very thin and worn away um, around the actual hole. But in this case no it's just that the hole itself has opened up. So now that I've analysed that I need to secure the perimeter. So what I'm going to do is take a length of my sock yarn and I'm going to do a very very simple running stitch in a large perimeter all the way around. So it's very important that you're stitching down into the strong part of the fabric. So this is what I meant when I said that sometimes the fabric is thinned away um, around the side of the hole, in which case you need to make sure that you're taking your reinforcing stitch not in the thin part but in the strong part of the fabric. So sometimes that can mean actually doing a stitch in a much bigger area than you'd anticipated. So I'll just start by securing my thread. So as you can see I've just done a very straightforward running stitch in and out, in and out, all the way around in a rectangle around the hole and I secured the thread at the end and I'll just cut it leaving a small length. The next step is to pick up stitches for the knitted patch. So this is when your knitting knowledge is coming in and you just need to pick a line where you're going to um, start picking up the stitches from. And I would do this just outside the reinforcing stitch. And as you're picking up the stitches, just do make sure that you are picking it up into the V of the knitted fabric. You can see that there's a V there, so that your stitches are the right way up. Um, otherwise, they won't be aligned properly. So I'm doing this with my yarn here. And there are different ways of picking up stitches. You could do this with a crochet hook. But I'm just going to stop talking now so that I can get on with picking up those stitches.
So I've picked up those stitches now and there are lots of different ways of picking up stitches. You can use a crochet hook if you prefer, but I did it by inserting my needle into the left side of the V. So I inserted my needle in there and then looped the yarn through and pulled it out. And I picked up stitches underneath the reinforcing stitch and then just outside the sides of the reinforcing stitch. So just one stitch outside. And because I made sure that I picked up the stitches into the V, my knitted patch is going to line up nicely. And obviously um, this sock is striped, which helps with the picking up to make sure that I'm doing it in a straight line. So just wanted to add a word of advice that if your sock is plain, doesn't have a stripe, just be careful and make sure that you are picking up straight down one row. So the next step is to just get on with knitting the patch. And I'm gonna do this back and forth straight knitting. So I'm starting off now with a row of purl after I had picked up and that's my row of purls. So basically now I need to keep knitting the way up to the top of the reinforcing line to form my patch. So let me get on with that. And now this is the patch about halfway. So you can get the gist of what I'm doing now, I think. I've got kind of halfway up the hole. So let me keep going for a bit longer. So now I've done all of the knitting on my patch. That's it with the hole and with the end of the yarn there. And as you can see, it just covers it up like that. And because it is stocking stitch, the edges of it are curling in slightly. The next step is to secure the patch in place. So I'm not going to cast off because I don't want to have a hard edge. Instead, I'm gonna break the yarn, but leave a tail. And what I'm actually gonna do is just secure down the live stitches onto the fabric just by doing a little whip stitch through it so nothing too tight nothing fancy and then the only thing you need to be careful of again is just making sure that your knitted patch now aligns with the rest of the stitches so i i simply do this just by kind of stepping back and looking at it and seeing if it's straight and it's a good idea to put a pin in as well here also here you could use a darning egg or a mushroom um, or you could put a citrus fruit in if you've got one to hand, something with a tough skin. Or simply what I tend to do is just put my hand in it 
and just actually use my fingers and my hand so my fingers are sort of pushing up on the inside and then my thumb is securing it down so you can obviously use different types of equipment if that helps you just experiment and find your way of doing it I tend to just see what I'm in the mood for on the day so sometimes I like to use citrus fruits on the inside but at the moment I'm just using my hands so obviously while we're doing this we need to be careful that we're not agitating the hole but because we have done that reinforcing stitch it should be quite strong so and then again as I mentioned I'm not being too precious about this mend because it's not a visible one and I'm just taking a little stitch in the sock and then a little stitch through the live stitch taking it off the needle so it's it's really nothing fancy at all I'm just whip, whipping it down there are probably better ways of doing this you know you could do a grafting stitch but like I explained before I need to keep these mending processes as straightforward and just uncomplicated as possible or I'm unlikely to actually ever do it and as long as you're not pulling the, the thread too tight, you know, as long as you're not yanking it hard, which I'm not doing, um, keeping it kind of quite soft and loose, then it will be fine and it will still have a bit of stretch. So in the live stitch and then in the fabric. So now you can see I've whip stitched that down, nothing fancy, and it has got a bit of give in it still that's so that's totally fine and then you need to secure down the sides and again I'm doing this in the same way just whip stitching it down quite gently the only thing that I'm being especially careful for is just making sure that I'm keeping the vertical and the horizontal lines in place although to be honest with you I have even done mending that has been very very wonky so Whatever floats your boat, I think you can be as kind of persnickety and careful as you want. And just the fact that this mend is knitted, um, just like the sock, means that it's going to have so much elasticity and flexibility that it is actually going to be very, very strong because the mend will actually stretch before it breaks. So that's a great thing. So as I'm whipping down, I'm doing it just outside the reinforcing, um, the reinforcing line that I did previously. And then I'll just secure that thread down, just by taking a couple of stitches in there. And then with my scrap, I'll just stitch. And then with my leftover scrap, I'll just stitch down the last side. So again, I'm opening out stocking stitch and if I shove in all of my loose ends inside the patch so that they will all be hidden take a couple of stitches to reinforce it and then away we go So now my patch is secured on the last three sides. The very last thing to do is just secure any loose ends. So let me pop that needle in the inside. Turn it round. Pull it through. So there are a couple of different ways that you could now approach this inside. So it depends on how careful or lackadaisical you're feeling. The first way is just to secure this thread here and trim the ends and just leave it like that. So just leave these ends hanging because they will eventually get felted in. They'll get fulled in because of all the abrasion and wear and the heat and the moisture from the sweat of the foot that happens. Um, you know, it will all just felt together very nicely in time. Um, but if you are <laughs> not happy, you know, kind of letting nature take its course you could do what I'm just kind of very quickly demonstrating now which is to do a little blanket stitch 
around the edge of the hole. Um, I'm running out of thread but you get the idea. You can just do a blanket stitch all the way around and then as you do the blanket stitch you can just catch it down to the patch very carefully just catch the edge of the patch so I'm not going to do that because as you've guessed I am of the <laughs> leaving caution to the wind because basically you know I've got the reinforcing thread so even if the fabric frays a bit more it's only going to go as far as the thread and then it's also got the patch where it's been picked up and it's been stitched around it so it's actually got a double line of stitching going around the perimeter of the hole and then even if it frays away now we've got the patch so I don't want to add too much bulk to the bottom of this sock or it might end up being a bit uncomfortable to wear therefore I'm just gonna cut the end of that off I'm gonna cut that down a little bit not all the way to the bottom but just leaving like maybe a quarter of an inch so less than a centimeter I don't want them to be too long but that is that my patched sock with its little knitted plaster that's on there and as you can see I'm pulling it it's perfectly stretchy and you know it's stretchy vertically as well and it's ready to go no one need be any the wiser ta-da it's done hooray so I'm pretty pleased with that um, I've actually got to do some more to patching on the second sock now um, but as you can see it is just a fine little patch on the bottom um, and if, you, if I actually reveal the rest of this sock here is another darn that I did um, over a year ago that is still holding up so this one was actually a darn not a knitted patch which actually when you pull this patch it doesn't there's not really any flex in it because it's the darning um, whereas this one if you pull actually the patch itself it moves which is just what you want on a sock so I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful in some ways um, let me know in the comments down below if you yourself have got any other further tips or advice when it comes to doing knitted patches or mending socks I would love to know if you agree with my mending methods if you disagree if you've got other ways of doing things and you're happy to share please do so because the comment sections of the Crimson Stitchery videos are always full of a wealth of knowledge and not only me but all other viewers definitely appreciate that as well especially when we have some newbies you know people that are more beginners to the crafts it's it's just such a lovely way of kind of of connecting with the community and just realizing that you know as they say there's more than one way to skin a cat except that I don't know why you would you would skin a cat could you even get close enough to a cat they always just run away anyway enough rambling from me today <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video please do hit the like button down below and subscribe to the crimson stitchery if you haven't done so already for more video tutorials about knitting mending and regular vlogs about everything that i've been making as i love to make everything beautiful and useful which i feel like is exemplified by mending a pair of really fun brightly colored socks I hope to catch you at the Crimson Stitchery again sometime soon. Meanwhile, take care. Bye-bye.